right then, what the hell are Sony doing? That is the question. In a nutshell, they've been making decisions that threaten their legacy, that threaten the brand that they've built up over the last 25 years, and, uh, well, their most devoted fans and developers. Doesn't sound good, does it? Now, to understand how and why, we have to go back a bit. PlayStation's history starts with a bang. The console itself came around after a failed collaboration with Nintendo on a CD drive for the SNES, and then they exploded onto the market. And as a brand goes, they were always provocative and aggressive, owing, of course, to their inventive Japanese roots and a few staff in the UK who were really, really on the ball. So that was old school Sony with PlayStation. They had the attention and they had the games to back it up. So it was all good for them. The legacy of PlayStation is one of creativity, variety, and mostly quality, with an undeniable Japanese backbone to the whole lot of it. In fact, who better than an old PlayStation boss to explain to us how they used to think? A little earlier, I was delighted to hear Andy give a shout out to one of the most iconic games of our time, Vib Ribbon. Yeah, give it up for Vib Ribbon. A personal favorite of mine that really embodies the PlayStation spirit. It wasn't a multi-million seller, but that's not the point. Viv Ribbon was unafraid to go against the tide. It was courageous in its ambition, and it brought a completely new experience to gamers. It's an incredible time to be part of the PlayStation family. I look forward to growing our gaming community through breakthrough experiences that inspire and delight. After all, guys, it's all about the games, isn't it? That was Sean Layden, a Sony veteran since 1987, holding major executive positions while managing software development for years. Now, he eventually became CEO of Sony's American branch and led Sony Worldwide Studios. But he left in 2019, reportedly due to an internal power struggle. That's something we'll come back to. So that is what PlayStation stands for. Or stood for, anyway. What's our guiding principle today? Well, thanks to Bloomberg, we've got a pretty good idea. And stop me if this sounds familiar. They are focusing their efforts on blockbusters and multi-million sellers. They are pulling development teams away from their own games to support the likes of Naughty Dog. They are only greenlighting safe projects and remakes. Yes, that is the same mistake that uh, every AAA publisher made years ago and is still suffering from now. Now, Sony is going to follow in those footsteps with pride. There's a bit at the end that'll really just sink that in for you. The report from Bloomberg details Groups of developers trying to fight management for creative control, but getting completely overwritten by what Naughty Dog wants and needs. The first casualty of this is Days Gone 2. Now, the first game, to be diplomatic, wasn't received very, very well. It did make a profit, though, but Sony still said no to a sequel, uh, sending banned studios to the Naughty Dog mines and, of course, in the process, losing key staff. Apparently, Band actually managed to escape an Uncharted project and is actually now working on new IP. The unlucky studio, in the report from Bloomberg though, is Visual Arts Service Group. Yes, they really gave them a lovely name, one that would be great for morale, that all the staff could really rally behind. Well, they are still supporting Naughty Dog on a PlayStation 5 remake of The Last of Us, because apparently that's something we need. Now, these are just some examples. Jason's report suggests that the problem actually runs deeper, and especially in Japan. Oh boy, Japan. To say that Sony Japan Studio was integral to PlayStation, that, that's a massive understatement. From making the first ever 3D platformer for the PS1, right up until the launch of the PS5, they were pumping out awesome games. Legend of Dragoon, Ape Escape, Ico, Shadow of the Colossus, Demon Souls, Gravity Rush, even Bloodborne. Now they're gone. 
<laughs> those 20-year veterans of Sony responsible for just legions of critically and commercially successful games that once defined PlayStation were pushed out. Demon Souls, as we know, was a huge part of their PS5 launch lineup, and it was announced to just explosive excitement. It released then to massive critical success. So what they did is they pushed the director out, they ended their contract with Bluepoint, and they shuttered Japan Studio before they could patch important bugs. Apparently that makes sense to somebody at Sony. Maybe Jim Ryan. The message here is clear. The Last of Us is the way forward. Games that are risky or imaginative are obviously no longer the goal with PlayStation. It is Naughty Dog, Santa Monica, Gorilla, Insomniac, and maybe some Sucker Punch, each sitting there making their own enormous hundred million dollar games, right? The humongous stuff. Everything else is a distraction, you know? Having a nice, balanced portfolio of games, not putting all your eggs into one basket. Ape Escape, Gravity Rush, Bloodborne. Eh, not good enough. Too Japanese. Not a fit for the global audience, it would seem. And it absolutely is a case of Japan versus America. For the past few years, Sony have been centralizing their operations in California, removing the autonomy of each regional branch, and that is, that autonomy is something that had been used to great success in the past. In 2016, they straight up moved their headquarters from Tokyo to California, effectively declaring an American victory. Recently, a verified ex-Sony employee suggested that America has been winning an internal battle for control, and they gave one very specific example. So, you know how in Japan they use X for cancel and circle for confirm, but in the rest of the world, they do the opposite. Well, apparently, Sony's decision to make Western controls the new Japanese default was a final F you to Japan. So imagine being a Japanese fan of PlayStation for the last 25 years. You buy the new console, the expensive controller, you know, all of that stuff. And then they went and they reversed your damn controls even to make them the Western default. So what made Sony go so American? Well, while we're only feeling the impact now, the tide actually turned years ago. So as you know, we could spend years listing what went wrong with the PS3. But we do definitely know what went right. Naughty Dog. Uncharted and The Last of Us account for three of the top five sellers on PS3. In their darkest time, Sony was rescued by the Western blockbuster, and now that is all they care about. It's a self-fulfilling cycle, too. Sony focused on big Western titles for the PS4's launch, and that actually drove sales uh, down a bit in Japan. So now their home country has a lower install base, and I guess to them is not worth earning back. Now, it's worth noting here that Sony's official response is that they are not moving away from the Japanese market, but I think their actions speak louder than their words. As a Japanese analyst puts it, quote, Nintendo has practically eradicated PlayStation. The decline of the PlayStation brand in Japan has become a well-known fact. So, there's that. Bit of an embarrassment to their legacy. Another contributing factor, then, is the shift over to California and its culture. So, I'm happy to let Japanese developers do their thing. The uh, censorship policy devised, uh, you know, in, in Sony America has, uh, well, it's been applied worldwide, despite there being different developers and different markets across the world. It's gotten so bad that starting around 2018, uh, reality's just done a complete 180 on us. Now, since the first days of the PS1, if somebody wanted some anime titty or, you know, a hundred hour long JRPG or a bunch of teenagers go and kill God, what would happen is you'd own a PlayStation console, right? Now, if you want to dodge the censorship, if the people who want those edgier games, it's not exactly my cup of tea, but if you want that, you should be able to get it. Uh, now, the Nintendo Switch is the place to do that. Sony has been removing modes from games. They have been blocking game releases entirely. They have been changing box art, forcing censorship of scenes in games, and restricting developers. So whatever you think about these genres, it shows Sony's hand, right? It's wild. It's insane to think that Nintendo, Nintendo, the people known for, like, kids' games and family-friendly stuff, that it's the Nintendo Switch store. That's just where you can get the more edgy third-party stuff. Wild.
PlayStation is just not the same as it was. Their priority is not those games that Sean Layden talked about. Unafraid to go against the tide and courageous in its ambition. Those are not benchmarks for a PlayStation game. It is about making that big, safe, glitzy looking blockbuster that can sell millions of copies to Westerners. Which, you know, is fine, but I don't think those games are particularly inventive as video games. Remember when Sean Layden was effectively pushed out of Sony as part of an internal power struggle? Well, instead of Sean Layden, we've now got Jim Ryan. Jim Ryan is the guy who thinks that nobody wants to play PS2 games because they look old. That is what Jim Ryan said. I'm not a big fan of Jim Ryan. Sony will put down its own legacy without a second thought, and their chosen future is just more Uncharted. A remake of The Last of Us. Who the hell wants that? The Last of Us is actually great, and it exists. You don't need to do a remake of a game that's so recent. Hell, Sony will even kill recent or ongoing projects to actively harm their audience. The Vita devs they've messed with by closing the store, the happy niche community collecting games on Vita, or, you know, anyone who cares about the preservation of digital games, well, Sony, via their recent moves, just gave them all the middle finger and thought nothing about it. Which, of course, we then see Jim Ryan pay big disrespect to older era games, and you kind of know the thinking that leads to all of this. And all those people are going to go elsewhere, and PlayStation's going to lose out. But an important point remains here. A lot of us are pissed off at this direction. Sony is willing to forget what made them special in the first place, seemingly as soon as they find a new trick. But is it actually a bad idea? Well, you could say that on paper, yes. But in reality, Sony has been really bloody successful. They have hit every note for their blockbuster since The Last of Us. Sony's too big to fail approach is working, at least for now. Their first-party studios have hit nothing but home runs for years. Pretty much. I mean, both Spider-Man games, Ghost of Tsushima, Horizon, God of War, critically beloved. They've resonated with a massive audience. And yes, The Last of Us Part Two is a bit more complicated, but it still was a critical success that sold millions. So Sony may well remain the kings of first-party development, and they'll make billions from it over this generation, of course. And also, it's not like we're starved for games. I mean, one of the biggest differences between the PS1 days and now is that now there's way more indies and way more indie publishers. You could say that Sony doesn't actually need to bother making those games when the indies are doing it for them. But that certainly is not going to take the sting away from them putting one of the best studios out there in the bin. They are going to be blindsided by the lack of variety in the next few years, especially if projects get delayed, or even if one blockbuster game releases in a bad state. You know, something about putting all of one's eggs into but a single basket? They are jumping, you could say, headfirst into the same trap that EA, Ubisoft, and Activision are struggling to recover from in these days. Two things to finish us off, then. First, God of War and Uncharted are two of Sony's biggest franchises. God of War's mega success only came with the fourth mainline game. Uncharted ran so that The Last of Us could fly. The franchises and studios need time and experience to make these absolute behemoth games. Sony's strongest studios have been with them for 20 years. And the thing is, it takes investment to get new studios up to that level. And then, with the reported crunch and high turnover rate at AAA studios, including and potentially especially at Naughty Dog, well, that health uh, is sure not to last forever. So if Sony are not prepared to take those risks in games in the first place, uh, you know, to actually put the time and the money into investing into the future, and they just focus purely laser on these AAA blockbusters and forget the rest, well, a few things may degrade over time. They might find themselves with not that much. Second, Sony seems to be genuinely proud of all the bullshit I've talked through with you today. IGN reported on this story, focusing on The Last of Us remake and the days gone to rejection. And the PlayStation Twitter account promoted the tweet. Promoted. I don't mean retweeted. I mean paid promote. 
They paid to advertise a story that spits in their own 25 year history of games and culture. What made their brand and not to the industry what it is. And they paid to promote a tweet that spat in their own face. So there you go. That's modern Sony for you. And that is this video for you. Thank you for watching. You can check out other content on this channel. Stay tuned. There'll be big rumblings going on next week. And with that said, have a great day. See you next time.